Hi, I'm Tony Bowen and welcome to my Corn Country Rails. Well, this month's video is basically an update. If anybody has been following my channel, you probably know that I got a large railroad collection this past fall. And when I mean large, I mean it had O2 rail, it had N scale, but the majority of it was HO. And so I started helping the family with this collection at the end of September got basically everything inventoried and at my house by the end of October and started selling stuff basically through email, my YouTube channel, uh, people that would stop by and pick items up basically all the way from October until Christmas break. After Christmas break from school, I started attending some regular train shows in my area and so I went to the Monticello, Iowa train show, the Dubuque, Iowa train show, and my last one that I went to was the Rockford, Illinois train show. And I have to say, at all the train shows, I sold a lot of the collection. And I can't thank enough the people who bought items, whether it was through mail order, whether it was people that stopped at the house, whether it was people that stopped by at the train shows and said, hey, I've seen your videos before, or I passed on your video to somebody who was an HO collector, any of those things, I, I just can't say thank you enough because obviously this meant more to the family that I was handling the collection for, um, and I was just literally the, the broker of the collection. Um, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say, do you buy estates? And no, I don't buy estates. Um, essentially, I have probably done six or seven um, collections like this where I've literally, the family has approached me because I've either known the, the uh, owner of the railroad equipment or was good friends with them um, before they you know, passed on. And the family just basically said, we don't know what to do with the collection. We know that we don't want it in the landfill. We know that we do want to find it a home and essentially that's what this last collection was of taking the last many months and finding homes for a lot of the O scale equipment, the N scale equipment, and the HO equipment. And I'm not all the way done yet. I have probably less than 20% of the collection left. I think last I counted, I have 49 loose HO cars. I have probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 box kits. Um, I think I have probably 12 to 10 HO locomotives. Um, I have numerous books and then I have those accessories, the bridge abutments, the truss bridges, um, just the things that you know layouts would need. Um, and then some odds and ends when it comes to track, some code 83 uh, Shinohari tracks and that but the majority of the collection has sold. And so I just thought this video would kind of thank all those people that obviously got in touch with me through YouTube and my Facebook channel. And um, I just wanted to say thank you for whether you bought something, whether you passed on that stuff, because it did mean a lot. Um, for the family, um, I have done very well by them in finding homes for the equipment and that. And so that is always good. And I. I personally take it and have done some self-reflection of, of my own stuff going that someday my own family is going to have to, you know, take care of my equipment. And, you know, I, I guess I've looked at it of during my living years, I will have enjoyed all of this and it's what gave me pleasure. I can't take it with me when I die and I don't expect my family to hang on to it just because I'm gone. I would much like them to take pieces that they remember their own dad from, that when my children were young, both of my children have RDC cars that they used to run around on my layout, like a race car track. I know that those are special to them and I would anticipate they will take them. But if there's other items or structures that they'd want great, then the rest, I'd hope they'd do the same thing to find people out there in the hobby that would want a piece of, of my collection. And so the rest of this video is gonna be just some snapshots and some narration of the train shows that I went to. And um, once again, I, I can't thank you enough for your support. So take care for now, everybody, and thanks for watching.
As I mentioned, I started getting the collection in the fall of 2022. And needless to say, this was a collection that we're talking, there was at least 30 years of his own collecting, but then he also had his dad's collection on top. And so walking into the train room basement was like walking into a time capsule. Um, since the death of my friend 13 years ago, literally the layout, his train room basically sat the way it did um, shortly after his death and hadn't been touched. So it was many train loads, or I should say van loads of trains um, coming from his home to my home so that I could unpack, uh, inventory, um, start working on my computer to get accurate inventory lists, and obviously things like boxes that had cars in it that I didn't even have the room to spread out. Um, there was loose engines, there was like circus trains from Walther's that I remember being a college student and seeing those things roll in. And so every couple of weeks I would make my way back to the family's house and pack up more of the collection. So there was O scale items, there were HO items, and then also there were some N scale items as well. And a lot of neat items of, you know, maintenance away and, uh, unique cars that were just um, unique to something that he built. So every time I made a trip home, uh, my basement got a little fuller. And so when people said, what are you working on on your own railroad? I basically said, well, nothing, because I have O-scale stuff in my room. I had HO stuff in my train room. I had boxes going down, so I had just a small path <laughs> anywhere in my my train room and uh, it was great you know it, it i needed the stuff here so that i could start inventorying and sooner or later get it priced plus i knew when i would start doing any kind of mail orders or picking up items that um, it was a whole lot easier if i had the items here and so there were literally boxes of cars that were not built um, some of the old atherin blue boxes and also some things that you know like the roundhouse uh, palace cars that were really cool. Um, boxes of structures and vehicles. And, you know, for a while I was like, will I be able to sell all this? And sure enough, you know, I, I've found homes for it. Unique pieces like this U25B. Um, here's another uh, lifelike U28. Some Jeep 35s that had been custom painted. A lot of N-scale locomotives, but a lot of them I already had or they were out of my era. Um, lots of different varieties of different passenger cars, uh, track cleaning equipment, and of course, on Saturdays when I wasn't working at school, I had the time to just basically work on the collection. So my fourth trip home with a collection was basically the last of getting anything that was left at my friend's house. So uh, he had a lot of HO stuff that was kind of in a display case, so some unique items there. And then just some other structures that I wanted to bring home that were kind of the last items to bring home since they were bigger and a little more delicate. Um, I also took out a lot of the tortoise switch machines prior to taking down the layout. And it was also bringing home those kind of high dollar items, such as many of the brass um, uh, cars and locomotives that had been bought over the years and that. And so a lot of the uh, brass items didn't take very long to sell uh, for people who were out there looking for them once I listed them um, for sale, which was great to, to see those items um, sell right away. Uh, to be quite honest, if I would have had three or four or five of some of those, I could have resold over and over and over again. So by this time, my train room was pretty full and I was ready to start moving stuff. 
I had a little makeshift table here that was kind of my mail center where I had my laptop, cash box, all my mailing address label items, um, using a lot of these boxes for like things like, you know, uh, mini 40 foot undecorated cars or the flat of tortoise switch machines. Um, had for sale the empty display cases of an N scale case, an HO case, and a O2 rail case. Um, had structures, some that were built, some that were still in boxes. And so, you know, everything basically had to be inventoried and priced to move. And of course, I was worried for some of these because some of them that had been built, I, I put on there. You know, I'm hoping the kit is all complete, but there may be pieces missing in that. Um, underneath, there were still additional structures, uh, vehicles, Magnuson vehicles, um, people. Um, since the layout uh, was a DC layout, I had a couple Control Master 20s. I had a rail and sound. Um, just a few transformers that I knew once they went to train shows, those would easily sell as well. The white shelving here in my train room was primarily where I tried to keep a lot of the motive power. Um, so, you know, we had everything from Stewart to Lifelike to Atlas to Cato, um, Proto 2000 locomotives. I mean, um, and, and a lot of it was obviously all Rock Island, whether it was a Rock Island collection. And somebody would say, well, do you have this railroad? No, it was primarily Rock Island. So having the inventory at home and having it sent out via my YouTube channel and email and Facebook, it was time to start mailing items out. And so between teaching during the week and then every evening coming home and packing boxes that I would line up on the train room and then get them all ready to mail out on Saturday mornings from my local uh, post office. Um, that, that kept me busy for several weeks. So with all the HO, O scale, and N scale items removed, it was time to take the layout down. Uh, the nice thing is that the track was laid but not ballasted. There was no scenery, and so essentially I could pull up the track and the switches with the hopes of reselling that and then essentially start dismantling the railroad. Um, the nice thing was I was hoping that we could salvage or reuse or repurpose a lot of the layout and the nice thing was a good friend of mine Steve that came and helped me take the layout down uh, he was able to repurpose a lot of the legs and certain sections of the bench work um, a lot of the uh, uh, El Girder went home with him, and so really all we had that ended up not being reused was kind of the, the sheathing part of the uh, bench work and basically the cork that was mounted on top of it. So it took the, pretty much a, a full Saturday, but the layout came down in the basement. So after having the layout down and having all of the equipment at my home, um, any of the last minute boxes that I had not priced items or had gone through to inventory, it still gave me time to make those adjustments to the inventory list and update those regularly, which I did. In the meantime, I was also still making trips to the post office on Saturdays as I was doing mail orders and also kind of made a cutoff that after the Christmas break, I would no longer be doing mail orders as I was going to focus the attention on the train shows I had lined up for uh, the winter. The first train show that we attended was the Monticello train show. It's about 23 miles away from where I live. 
Cannot thank my wife Jennifer enough for her help during the train show. Uh, Saturday was a very well attended train show. Um, also got a chance to meet a couple fans of my Corn Country Rails uh, YouTube channel. And so it was definitely nice to see some youth that have been inspired to become future model railroaders as well. And so I was glad to meet with them and visit with them. Um, this was a two-day train show, so the first day was pretty well attended. Second day was a little slower, but overall still did very well for our first train show and ended up selling quite a bit of the collection on that first time out. Well, after the Monticello train show, it was the task of packing everything else up, taking it home, getting it inventoried of what sold, and then obviously I had another train show about another month out. But what was nice in between time is the family had some pictures for the collection that they said hey would you be willing to sell these as well at train shows would they go and i said you bet they'll sell at train shows so i picked up the pictures and took those to the next train show to sell for the family In early March, I had a train show in Dubuque, Iowa, which is about an hour away from me. And so I had the collection all re-inventoried and ready to go. So once again, moving everything into my tables that I had for the day, getting set up, ready for the train show day. And this was also a really nice show. Uh, this show had just moved to a new venue this year, a little more space, uh, very... Uh, easy access for people to get in and out of. The last one was in a basement of a church, so it had a lot of stairs, um, and it was very well attended. Really good train show here as well. And then right next to me, I had a friend of mine in my round robin group that had the table set up. The only thing against him is he's a Cardinals fan, but other than that, it was a pretty decent day. The nice thing about attending these train shows is I'm finding myself that I was coming home with less boxes than I went with. So that was a pretty good indication that I had sold a lot. The last train show I went to was in Rockford, Illinois. That's about two and a half hours away from where I live. So I ended up spending the weekend there and uh, really enjoyed this two-day show. Got there on a Friday afternoon at Harlem High School, got set up at beautiful gymnasiums, one set up for vendors, and then the other one they must have had about 12 different module groups uh, set up with different layouts and that. The surprise was Saturday morning when I woke up and there was three and a half inches of snow on the van, um, which really kind of impacted the train show that morning. Um, it was pretty slow going when the show opened at 10 o'clock, but by noon, um, the snow had pretty much stopped, uh, the streets were cleared, and the show stayed busy from about noon until it closed at 5 o'clock that evening. So this was a, a really nice two-day show.
So the second day of the train show, I woke up and there was kind of a freezing rain mix, which made another impact on the attendance for the morning of the show. But here again, by probably 1130 or noon, um, things had cleared off, attendance had increased. And so both days were kind of impacted due to weather. But for the most part, um, it was a very well attended show. And I, I would have to say that I sold well, sold the full circus train that I had um, from Walther's. That was great. Table looked a little clearer in many spots. Um, so I sold some things there. And then, of course, at the end of the day, it's that packing it all up um, to take it home. And just as the Dubuque show and Monticello show, if I sell well, I have less boxes to take home with me, which is also a good thing as well. So it was time to hit the road back home. And by the time I got home, got everything re-inventoried, I'm down to just this left in the collection. So thank you for watching. And if you've bought from this collection, I can't thank you enough for your support. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.